All right, now, two-dimensional tensors, which are matrices. Uh, one of the first things we need to do is transpose. Transpose is when you take a matrix and you basically rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, so, so you take the row and you make it a column, like that. In PyTorch, you have a matrix M and you say torch dot T for transpose M. That's, uh, and, and that takes care of it for you, all right? So if you have an M by N uh, matrix, you do that, you get an N by M matrix. You rotate it. Oh, okay. Uh, so where were we? Yeah, transpose. Transpose has some really nice properties. Um, if you know these, then when you read the papers, you won't get lost. Hey, what, what happened? There was a T here, now there is a T here, and, and they changed uh, uh, positions, places. So if you take matrix A, multiply by matrix B, and then take the transpose, uh, this is equivalent to uh, taking a transpose of matrix B, uh, taking transpose of matrix A, and then uh, multiplying them with a in a reverse order, all right? And uh, on, uh, on addition, you can distribute it. So it's, um, it's transitive. Any questions so far? No? You can actually, uh, I, I didn't put this in, uh, in, in the Colab notebook, but if you like, you can numerically uh, test this. So take two, create two matrices in PyTorch and, uh, and compute the left side and compute the, the right side and uh, test to see if they are the same. All right, dot product, we have seen it from uh, our childhood, right? Well, since we were seven, that we have, two met uh, we have two vectors and we want to find the, the distance, the angular distance between the two vectors. What we do is the dot product, which, which gives me the size of, matrix, uh, of, vector, of the first vector, the size of the second vector, multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. When is, when is this uh, maximum? It is maximum where uh, cosine of theta is one, which means theta is zero. That means when the two vectors are aligned, um, the, uh, the, the, the dot, dot product is maximum. It's minimum when they are perpendicular. If we represent the vectors in the vector format, a dot product means element-wise uh, multiplication and the summation of, uh, of the whole thing. Uh, for example, if uh, my a vector is this, b vector is this, uh, a dot b is two times three plus four times five plus six times seven, which is uh, 68. And in PyTorch, you don't need to write nested do loops to, to, do, to do this. You just, very similar to NumPy, uh, you say torch.matmol, Ma matrix multiplication of matrix A and B. You also have MM, but MATMOL is, uh, is more general. And so I mentioned NumPy. Everything you do in NumPy, you can do in PyTorch on GPU, which means you will be uh, between three to 700 times faster. And this is one of the assignments that we are going to do uh, this week for you to implement something in NumPy and re-implement it in, uh, in PyTorch and run it on GPU and see uh, the difference in the speed. All right, real life problems. Uh, see, we are doing all of this because we want to be able to solve uh, real life problems. Uh, where, is, uh, the, where are the vectors important and uh, how do we use them? 
So one of the really interesting and successful applications of deep learning is when you apply it to text. And uh, to work with text, we use natural language processing, which is a really um, interesting field. Um, and deep learning is very useful there because us humans are really bad at reading text. What is more terrible than asking you to read a, uh, a, a document that is 1,000 page long, right? This is terrible. And we, we, get, uh, we get tired and, and we cannot extract information. But we can train deep learning algorithms to, uh, and to learn the human language and extract information from the document. Um, learn that, you will have very good jobs because, because this, is, uh, this, is, this, is really, um, this is really hot these days because we have just learned how to do this very successfully with deep learning. Um, all right, the first step when you do that is that we have words. We don't know how to work, to work with words when we are doing deep learning. Um, so to make words computable, uh, we take a corpus of all of our documents and we train a model that looks at where the words are used semantically in a sentence. For example, it sees that uh, every time I say, I'm going to eat, after that, it will be lunch or dinner or pizza or apple, right? And then, it, so it learns that the, these words are semantically similar. Uh, we never say, I'm going to eat a train, okay? Now, we can capture all of that information in the form of vectors. Uh, and when you do that, uh, you, you'll see that if, if I have pizza and trains, uh, my, 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 my vectors that are representing pizza or lunch and train, they will be far from each other. But, but, but lunch and dinner and pizza and apple, they, they will be very close to each other, all right? This is called word embedding. Uh, you can easily, this is 2019, you can easily uh, build a, a big corpus of documents and you can train your own word embeddings, which are uh, huge dimensional vectors that contain the information um, uh, in, in, in the words. So for example, you can have a 300 dimensional vector that conserves all of that information. Then everything is easy. I have vectors and I feed it into my machine. So if I take a text, and if I convert every word into a 300 dimensional vector and I stack them on top of each other, I have a two dimensional uh, object which looks like a, an image, right? Yeah, so, so this is very rough, but I just want you to have an idea. And then I can, I can, I can use that matrix to do uh, computation on it. I can, class, I can classify, I can cluster, I can do a lot of different things with it, all right? So this is called the word embedding. And uh, in our um, assignment, I have given you tons of stuff to go learn about it, uh, experiment with it. Uh, if you want, train your own word embeddings. If not, use pre-trained models and do interesting algebra with that. Uh, one of the properties of this is that uh, you have, if, if, you, if you pick four words, like king, queen, man, and woman. So man is close to woman, king is close to queen because they have similar meanings, semantic meanings. You can do linear algebra with that, which means if I say king minus man will be power only, right? And then plus a woman, uh, you, can, you can try it out and, and do the, the, the linear algebra and see that you get the vector of the queen back. So 
king minus man plus woman gives you a queen. And that's how we do uh, deep learning with words. All right. Matrix multiplication. After uh, vector multiplication, we, we move to matrices. And in matrices, if we have two matrices, uh, the way to multiply them is to take the, the, the rows, the columns here, rotate them, multiply by the rows and sum, and then put them in the, in, in the result. If you want to do it in PyTorch, it's just one line of code, mat, mat, matrix multiplication, matrix one and matrix two, and that's it. All right. Um, what are the interesting matrices that we usually see and, and, and have to deal with? We have the diagonal matrix. The diagonal matrix is the simplest matrix, the second simplest matrix, where you have values only on the diagonal. Why is this nice? It is really nice because uh, here you have n squared numbers to, uh, to, to carry with you. If a matrix is diagonal, all you need to do is to uh, make a vector out of this and only carry this information. So your, your information gets compressed hugely from n squared into n. Uh, in PyTorch, if you want to use that, you just uh, say torch.diag, and then you give it a tensor that contains this information. That's it. Uh, the second interesting matrix is the identity matrix, which is a diagonal matrix where you have ones um, on the diagonal. Okay, so this is even more compact because you only have one number to carry with you, and that is what number is on the, di on the diagonal. And in PyTorch, you say torch.i, and, and you write i this way, and give it the size. Um, if I is the identity matrix. Uh, anything multiplied by that gives you that matrix as well. And you also have the null matrix where everything is zero. And in PyTorch, you say torch does zeros, and you give it the size that creates it for you. In the um, in the assignments, that the, not, not assignments, in the hands-on session, we will uh, create a two-dimensional matrix. We will fill it up with noise. Ra uh, it could be a random white noise or a Gaussian distributed noise. And then we will build a feature into it like this. And then we will transpose it and we will plot it again so that you can experiment with everything that you learned so far and also see visually how things change. And also you can do it with, with this um, other image that has features in it. Yes? Oh yeah, so forget about machine learning. When I, oh, uh, the question is what do we mean by features? And I guess the source of confusion is features is what I use to train my machine my, my models on, right? So when I say features, here I mean visual features. For example, if you don't have this, this line here, um, this looks pretty homogeneous, right? Uh, so I, by feature, I mean build something into it that breaks the, the, uh, the isotropy of, of the image. Like here, you, you have this thing here, which is not there, and you can, you can see which direction is up or left or right. That's what I mean by feature. Yes? Can you give an example of a diagonal matrix or identity matrix with respect to word embeddings? Like, um, um, so, I just want to pictureize it. So word embedding give you, uh, word embeddings give you a, gives, gi give you vectors, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, it doesn't give you a two-dimensional matrix. Uh, if you want to picture a two-dimensional matrix and, and where you use it uh, and connect it to the word embeddings, imagine this. I have 
a sentence. Give me a sentence. <laughs> give me a sentence, okay? <laughs> so, give me a sentence. We have four words here, right? And uh, so, I, uh, because I have trained my model on all of Wikipedia, um, I know, the, I know the, the vector that represents uh, give, okay? Uh, and also the vector that represents me, let's say in two dimensions, um, just assume we did it in two dimensions, okay? Can I write here? So in two dimensions, I have, can you see if I write here? Yeah, so I have give me a sentence, right? And let's say my word embeddings are two dimensional. And uh, so this is give, uh, this is me, this is a, and this is sentence, okay? And uh, so this will be a vector of one and one. That is, let's say, two and one. A is uh, three and, no, minus three and 0 0.5. And sentence is uh, 0 0.1 and uh, minus five, okay? Uh, then I can stack them on top of each other, and I'll get 1, 1, 2, 1, minus 3, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, minus 5, okay? This is not how we use them, and, and the word vectors are much longer. They are like uh, at least 100 dimensional, because you need to capture all the information in them. But, uh, but you can see, I started with a sentence, and I built... A, I built a set of numbers, uh, a two-dimensional matrix that contains the semantic information that I have in that sentence. All right? Yes. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm following this intuitively. So the 100 dimensions for each word sort of represent, and you said you built your corpus on Wikipedia, sort of the relative context of that word to every other word in your corpus. And you need 100 yes. dimensions in order to make that consistently relative for every word to every other word. Yes. So more similar words are, more, are, are closer. And uh, words that are semantically very different are further away from So I could almost imagine I could take your vectors that I train, and someone else can train their model just randomly, separately. And they end up with a model that's completely different but relatively speaking, all the vectors are still there and they all have the same difference. And, and, and uh, you just need to make sure that your, your vector spaces are rotated properly. And, okay. and, uh, and I think uh, you, had the, you had the whole series on this, uh, this one, right? You, on, on the... Modern yeah. Um, we, we did not cover... Um, we, we covered the mathematics of uh, board to vector love and so on and so forth. We did not necessarily cover the linear algebra uh, uh, built upon. Fantastic. So uh, we are, this is a complementary, um, yeah. right. <laughs> um, in, the, in the reading assignments, I have listed a few really interesting, nice papers. So if you, if you read that, and uh, that includes a, a, a very recent paper that, that talks about why, why can we do linear algebra with, with word vectors, with, with, with word embeddings. It's a pretty nice and, and very intense paper. So read it at your own risk. 